I am Miwako. I was born in the little town of Oiso near Yokohama. In 1945, after the war had ended, I met an American soldier named Walter Lutz. We fell in love. Two years later, we married and left Japan for the United States. On the day our plane landed in Cleveland, Walter's hometown, I was nervous and worried about meeting his family. Walter's mother was friendly, but I wondered if she was wishing that Walter had married an American girl. The others were nice to me too. look at Cleveland, Ohio, the city which was to be my new home. Mrs. Ratz had been living alone since Walter's father died, and we were going to stay with her until we could get a home of our own. As I looked around me, I was frightened. In this house, I would have to face a new life, very different from the one we had known in Japan. The next evening, Walter invited his family to come to the house and see the pictures he had taken in Japan. I was still uneasy because I wasn't sure these people liked me. Something unpleasant happened to me that night. Walter's cousin telephoned, and Mrs. Ratz wanted me to introduce myself. English was hard for me then, especially on the telephone. And what I expected happened, I couldn't understand a word. I knew there was no reason to be upset, but I felt stupid and ashamed. I took
took this picture of Miwako on our wedding day. This is Miwako's hometown, where we met. And this is her mother. Miwako took this picture of me near Mount Fuji. One thing that especially intrigued me was bamboo. This is Miwako and I just after we became engaged. And this is a picture of Miwako's family, taken the day we were married. The picture show was almost like introducing Miwako's family to my own. anything else, I wanted my mother to accept Miwako and to like her, especially because the two would often be alone together while I was away on business. One thing was sure, the children liked her. I could see Miwako was relaxed and happy. Now she was teaching the kids a Japanese game. Next day, I introduced Miwako to my town. I was a little nervous for her sake because I knew that an American with a Japanese wife would attract attention on the street. get a look of real resentment from one woman. She had lost a son at Iwo Jima. Miwako was disturbed, but when I explained, she understood. I knew she was still feeling a little strange, and I thought some new clothes might make her feel better. So we went shopping. They came, two weeks later, when Walter had to go away on business. As his suitcase snapped shut, I felt already the loneliness of being without him. Walter's mother would be with me, but my poor English made it hard for us to talk. And we did not know each other yet.
became homesick for Japan and my own mother. I remembered our house, the voices of my brothers and sisters. I remembered home. if Walter, 300 miles away in another city, was as lonely as I was. My trip was over and I came home. I could hardly wait to see Miwako. Although Miwako tried to conceal it, I could see that she had been desperately lonely while I was away. More than anything else, I wanted her to be happy. One thing was clear. I would have to have a different job. One that would not take me away from Miwako. But what job? carvings seem so simple. Maybe we could even make them ourselves. Miwako thought it would be fun to try.
That night, Miwako wrote to her brother asking him to send us some raw bamboo. Weekends and evenings, Miwako and I experimented. Little by little, we improved on our first crude attempts. Both became so interested in what we were doing that we lost all track of time and often worked late into the night. Finally, we were so pleased with our work that I decided it might be saleable. A friend of ours owned a small house furnishing store and had offered to try selling the things for us. Objects sold so quickly that we could hardly make them fast enough. Not long after, I was to go on another business trip. I always dreaded these separations as much as Miwako. Just before I left, my mother handed me a letter. It was from my friend who owned the store. And inside was another check for a sizable amount and a request for many more orders more than Miwako and I could fill working only evenings and weekends. I never went on that trip. But then and there, I made up my mind to quit my job and go into the bamboo business. I had some savings and so we decided to open a store. I was so happy about the store that little by little I was feeling less like a stranger in a foreign country and more at home. And then the telephone rang. I knew the others were busy and I should have answered it myself but I just couldn't. 
couldn't blame Walter for being annoyed with me, and I was ashamed. I decided to do something about this, so I joined a class at YWCA where I could improve my English. English improved so much that I was able to wait on customers. But I was still afraid of the telephone. Walter understood and always answered for me. I was grateful, and yet, each time the phone rang, I felt that I had failed him. It was after our regular closing time and Walter was anxious for us to get home. We had both been working very hard ever since the opening of the store. The next day was a Sunday, and we were going to go on a picnic. We thought a day in the country would do us both good. Business at the store had been slow at first, but now we could look around us with pride in what we had done. We were together and our future seemed good. It was fun being along with water, just like our first days in Japan.
Walter needed a doctor, and somehow I had to get one. I had no choice now. At that moment, the telephone became my friend instead of my enemy. When Walter was better, we decided to give a skiaki party. I was right. I knew I was. The Mrs. Ratz had become a second mother to me. Something in my mind that night. Something I have to tell Walter about. I told him I was going to have a baby. It was just a beginning. We have two of them now. Two little girls. I wish my mother could see them. Meanwhile, here is a picture. 